So you want to learn how to export your videos the proper way for YouTube in 2022 so you get the most amount of quality possible. Well, in today's video, I'm going to show you exactly how you can do that. Hello everybody and welcome to this video. My name is Vince from clientsforcreatives.com and uh, let's get straight into it, okay? So as you guys can see, I have my little project right here on my timeline where I have some clips and uh, a music audio track under it, right? So the first step that you want to do if you are trying to export a video is set the in and out points of your sequence, right? So that is going to basically determine what is included in the actual export. So to set the in and out points on your sequence, what you want to do is go to the part where you want to start the video. So in that case, I'm gonna start it at the beginning and then go to the end of it where you want it to finish. In this case, I'm gonna do that here and press O on your keyboard. So I for in and O for out, okay? And if you messed up or want to redo your selection, you can just right click on this area and you can go clear in and out. And uh, that way you can clear your selection. So once you have done this, you want to go to file and then you want to go to export. You want to go to export media. And now this is where you will set the settings of your export. So as you can see here on this little timeline, you can uh, see what's actually included in your uh, final video that is going to be exported. So just make sure that everything is in it that you want to have in it. And uh, now we are going to set the settings uh, for the export. So first of all, you want to set the format to H.264. This is like the most commonly used format for internet videos. So I, I recommend using that. Now, as for preset, um, there is actually a YouTube preset inside of Premiere Pro, which is called YouTube 1080p Full HD. So I usually just select that to start with and then kind of tweak it after that. So as you can see, the next thing you have here is the output name. So if you click on that, you can select where um, the video is going to be saved and you can also name it. So in this one, I'm going to name it tutorial video because I'm super creative as you guys can tell. And then you want to click on save. And uh, now I have named it and I have selected where I wanted to export it. And uh, now you want to make sure that export video is checked and you want to make sure that export audio is also checked. You also get a nice little summary here, um, which is going to show you where it's going to output the video, the settings of the export, and also you can see the sequence settings. So what you want to make sure is that right here, where it says uh, 1920 by 1080, or whatever it says for you, depending on what quality you are exporting in, you want to make sure that that matches the sequences um, resolution and also the frame rate. So you can see it's full HD here and 24 frames per second here and the same for the sequence. So I have it set correctly. Now, if you want to export in 4K, you can also just go to the presets and then choose the YouTube 4K version, right? After you go down a little bit right here, you can even set your uh, video resolution right here. So if you want to change that and not have it kind of match your sequence settings, which I highly recommend, but if you want to change that or um, use different settings, you can set it right here. Um, you also can set the frame rate here, but I usually just recommend using match source. So it just matches whatever you have on your sequence, whatever you have edited it in, and uh, then it's going to be correct. Uh, for the aspect, you want to have it set to square pixels. If you want the maximum quality, obviously you want to check this render at maximum depth um, little checkbox here. So just click on that. And then as you go down, you can see uh, here in the encoding settings, it's really important that you have the level set to 4.2 for optimal quality and uh, high profile is what I use usually. Yeah, with these other settings right here, I don't really mess with those. Now the bitrate settings is one of the most important parts of your export because that is basically going to determine how much detail is uh, in your image at all parts of it, right? As you are exporting, like how much detail should it export into the final video? You have a couple options here. You have VBR one pass and VBR two pass and CBR. So. I never use CBR. I think that it's just like one where it uh, doesn't change the bitrate throughout the whole video. It's just one bitrate throughout the whole thing. Uh, I don't use that. I either use VBR one pass or VBR two pass. So basically, if you are exporting a video like a vlog where there is a lot of movement uh, and a lot of 
moving things. There is basically a completely new frame with completely different pixels every single second or every millisecond even. In that kind of video example, when you are shooting like a vlog or something with a lot of action, you want to have uh, as high of a bitrate as possible so you keep those details um, even in those kind of action shots but if you are just exporting a talking head video like this one where basically the only thing that's moving in this video is me personally the background is mostly just stationary then I wouldn't use um, VBR2 I would just use VBR1 pass with um, 15 megabits per second so YouTube actually has a little list where they show you what they recommend for uh, the maximum quality of uploads and their numbers are actually like rather on the low side because they really compress the videos that you upload to YouTube. So here is what I recommend uh, as a whole. If you are just shooting like a sit down video or something where there isn't that much movement happening, I just recommend going with VBR one pass around 50 megabytes per second. And that way your file sizes won't be that big. And also that will mean that your upload times to YouTube are a lot lower, right? If you're shooting something like a vlog or like a cinematic video where there is a lot of movement happening, a lot of changes every second of the, the video, then I would recommend you to do VBR two pass. And the way I would set that up is is make the maximum bitrate um, 25 and then the minimum 15. So this is going to be more than enough for YouTube. Um, and this just really means that even when there is a lot of movement happening uh, in your image and the pixels are constantly changing color, then Premiere Pro is going to put a lot more um, kind of like detail into those parts of your video and where there isn't that much happening, like for example, if there is just a stationary shot where a lot of the pixels stay the same for a long time, then it won't put that much kind of uh, detail into that. So this will kind of like optimize your file size as much as possible, but at the same time, give you the highest quality. So, so basically to sum it up, CBR is when you are using a constant bit rate throughout the whole video. VBR is when it still analyzes your video, but you can only set like the maximum amount of detail that it should use. And VBR two pass is when it analyzes your video kind of two times and uh, you can set the minimum that you don't want to go below in terms of like your bit rate, but also you can set your maximum, which you don't want it to go over because it's just pointless and it's just going to create a huge file. So. In this example, I'm just going to use these settings and then I don't uh, check keyframe distance. I don't check video as VR because this is not a VR video, of course. And lastly, um, I usually check use maximum render quality um, and I don't use any of these other ones personally. Uh, for time interpolation, you want to check frame sampling for most of your videos and uh, yeah that is basically it for the effects tab i don't really check anything for the audio tab um, that is also an important one i just set aac for kodak and uh, stereo channels and uh, 320 bit rate um, for the bit rate settings and for the multiplexer i don't mess with that i don't mess with captions and I don't use this publish tab either personally. So after you have set all these different settings, you can actually save this as a preset if you click right here. And um, yeah, you can just set this up for yourself like 1080p um, YouTube preset. And um, if you do this, then you will be able to just select this from your presets here and you won't have to like re redo this every single time you are trying to export something and after this you have two options you can either just click export and then it's going to export it straight from premiere pro or if you have adobe encoder you can click on q and it's just going to add it to adobe encoder and render it from that so you can still keep editing in premiere pro um, so that is basically it in a nutshell uh, so let's just click on export and as you can see it started exporting my video so hope you guys found this video useful if you want to download premiere pro then go and click the link in the description below uh, to get a free seven day trial or a student discount if you are a student and uh, that really helps support the channel as well. So really appreciate you watching this video. If you want to see more content similar to this, then 
click subscribe and uh, watch more of my videos. Hopefully you're going to find them valuable. And if you are a freelancer or a creative entrepreneur who's trying to get clients online, then go ahead and book in a call with me uh, to see whether you would qualify for our one-on-one -on -one coaching program where we help regular people just like you, maybe freelancers who are already doing a couple thousand dollars to build a creative agency or a creative freelancing business that does 10K per month. So hope you enjoyed and I will see you guys in the next one.